you guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be talking about my nikki journey stay tuned <laughs> journey was a journey my son was born one pound 15 ounces he was born 15 weeks early at 25 weeks very early he was in a NICU for four and a half months he was born in December he got out around at the end of April so yeah about four and a half months let me tell you parents that have babies in the NICU are a different type of strong people don't know how difficult it is to have a baby in the NICU until you have a baby in the NICU people always say you know I'm so sorry um, everything's going to be okay but parents in the NICU are the only ones that gets how it feels to have a baby in the NICU one day it'll be up one day down it's just like you never know you never know what day is going to be my whole Nikki journey was a roller coaster it was up and down up and down for example after he came out he was doing good he actually got extubated pretty quick but then he was intubated right after that then he was extubated intubated it just kept going back and forth actually for him to completely be extubated they actually had to give him a steroid it's called that's a methadone if i'm not mistaken it's a steroid that they use for preemies that is having a hard time getting extubated and actually worked for him. It, he was off the vent in like a week after that. It really is an emotional roller coaster, especially phone calls. Oh my gosh, I was scared every time they called my phone. Every time they called my phone, I would tell them, Can you please start off? Is it good or bad? Because I used to hate every time they call and they do this long introduction, and I used to cut them off and be like, Is he fine? <laughs> and then they'll be like, It's fine, he's fine, he's fine. I'm just calling for something else. And I was like, you need to start with that. <laughs> we face a bunch of problems in the NICU. It's so many to even go over everyone, but I know his biggest one was pooping. He could not poop at all by himself. He needed glycerin his whole five months in the NICU. He actually needed glycerin to pass his first stool, his meconium. He just did not want to poop by himself. He actually got off of glycerin um, before he got home, but we'll talk about that later. Being that he had trouble pooping, it was like a never ending cycle. He would not poop, his stomach would get big. They were scared that he would get nick, if I'm not mistaken, and EC. Um, it's a stomach infection that's really dangerous to preemies, but he was never diagnosed with that. It was just him having trouble pooping. Another problem he had was he was getting sick, and so they thought he had meningitis, but just to rule out meningitis, they had to do a procedure but it's not just like stick here it was like a lumbar puncture and they actually had to like go through the spine and it's like a really serious procedure especially with preemies like him so they did the procedure just for them to call me to say they couldn't get in the right spot so basically he had it for nothing and but luckily I can say it was not meningitis because that would have been serious too so he was lucky on that part another big problem he had was he had severe reflux. His reflux was a lot. Every time he ate, he would have to get help for at least like 30 minutes to an hour. I'm even scared now. I hold him for a long time after he still eats. But every time you laid him down when he was in the NICU, if you laid him down too quick, he would have an event. So an event in the NICU um, in preemies is when they get a low heart rate and low saturations. And also in some cases, they stop breathing. It's really serious. So every time you laid him down too quick, he would have an event. And also he would have events just in general, but that actually kind of caused it sometimes too. He also had a PDA and a PFO. So that was also the reason why he was having his events too, because that can cause it. But they actually were pretty small and the PDA closed by itself and the PFO was like very small on discharge. He just went through a lot. He was anemic. His H&H &H was sometimes low and they measure H&H &H to see if he would need blood or not. And he actually needed three transfusions. Preemies usually have trouble with producing blood, but as they get older, they start producing it normally. He also had several sepsis workups. And then if you, if you start showing any signs of infection, they automatically do a sepsis workup just to make sure you don't have any infections because 
and affection for preemie can be detrimental. Luckily, every time he had a sepsis workup, it came back negative. Him being on a vent for so long caused him to have chronic lung disease, but his was pretty mild, and preemies is pretty common. They explain it to me, it's not like adult chronic lung disease. In preemies, it can go away as they get older, or it could show up as like asthma, like that's the worst it can be. I think being a nurse and having a baby in a NICU, it was good and bad. The good is they listened to me and they respected my my decisions. I always talked to the doctors and I did rounds every time they did the round on my baby. I understand their lingo. They couldn't have tell me things or, or put it pretty and try to downplay it. I knew it so they had to tell me and explain it. I also could challenge things because I understood it. I would say always ask questions and even if you don't know what it is, ask them say can you explain it to me please so you know exactly what's going on in your child's care i think the bad thing with me being a nurse there was i knew everything that, that they were talking about they couldn't like sugarcoat it and they couldn't make me feel better because I know what it means and if it's gonna be very bad. Another thing that I think was bad was I hovered the nurses. I did hover the nurses because probably being in a nursing field, I know probably mistakes can happen, but no mistakes was gonna happen with my baby. So I did hover. I actually said no new nurses or or nurses on orientation. I did not want a nurse that just starting out in the ICU with babies at that to be taking care of my baby. And nurses on orientation, usually people don't know. If you see two nurses most of the time come in the room and there's one hanging back and the other one is doing something, that nurse is on orientation. And me being a nurse, I knew that. And so I would say, is she on orientation? And they would be like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I asked for no nurses on orientation. So I know they were getting irritated, but by all means, I'm there for my baby. I'm not there to hold somebody's hand. I'm sorry. I want somebody experienced and know what they're going to do. So as time went on, things start getting better and he start having less events. He start eating on his own, eating his bottles, taking his whole bottle down, gaining weight. At this point, they said they really can't do anything else for him. Every time that they doing care, I'm doing his care. Literally, I'm, t I'm doing all his care. Like the nurses love when I'm there. They don't even have to do anything. I'm doing all his hands on. I'm doing his vitals. I'm feeding him. So it's like more help and they don't really even have to do anything for him. So he was about to go home and we had took off. We had took our leave and that night he was about to go home. He had 10 events in that one night. So after that, he was on Alti Watch. If you're in the NICU, you know what Alti Watch is. Alti Watch is a preemie has to have seven days with no events, no scares, no anything before you can take them home. He had like 10 resets of Alti Watch because he kept having events, but I suggested he just have like caffeine because they had took all his medication away to go home. But I was like, could we just do caffeine like a small dose so they give caffeine to babies to preemies to stimulate their brain to say time to wake up if they're sleeping because they forget to breathe while they're asleep and with that he started doing better the only thing with caffeine is you have to be on a monitor to go home so they told me really that the only reason why they felt comfortable with him going home with, and with me giving him caffeine and with him being on a monitor is because i'm a nurse and because i was able to take care of him and they felt comfortable actually letting him go home when it was time so after i said about his 10 resets and they added caffeine he was on home on a monitor after that he was actually ready to go home finally my advice is to fight for your baby even if you're scared you are the parents i would say fight for them the only thing i can say that i wish that they could do different and that i recommend for you guys that are nikki parents is to get the specialties on in the beginning so i told you he had pooping problems and his stomach used to get big and everything like that so i would say like two weeks before it was time for him to go home they put a consultation in for gi to come talk to him and gi suggested how about if we just take him off of glycerin because i told you he he was on glycerin the whole time he was in the NICU so they was like let's just take him off of glycerin just to see what his body does because we don't know because every time it would get a little big everybody would get scared and be like glycerin time to get glycerin so they suggested let's just see what his body does if it gets big it's okay let's just see and lo and behold 
after a couple days he pooped by himself they said that he's not an everyday pooper that is fine for him to poop every other day and i just say that to say if they were there in the beginning, I think he would have probably gone home sooner. He stayed there because of his pooping. So I would say if it's any specialties or anything like that, I would suggest you tell them to get them on in the beginning. Thank you for watching my video. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.